Hello and welcome to DPN TV here at the DPN Rover Car Collection. This is going to be a video on how to change the AC compressor, replace it for a new one, and how to change the dryer. Now hopefully this will be part one of a two-part video as once you've change those two items you're going to need to vacuum the system and then regas the system back up which will be part two of the video as always we hope that this video acts as a visual reference alongside using the uh, manual for all the technical information of course we use the Haynes manual and also the Rover X part um, manuals on disk that use a pdf to allow you to read them uh, i think haynes also do an ac book that's um, also worth getting as well but as i said when we um, reference through books and manuals it's always good to have a sort of a visual reference online and we always recommend in watching other videos as well to really build the picture up before you sort of tackle a uh, job like this but as I say hopefully it's a helpful guide and we'll start the job off under the um, bonnet and uh, take you through the process we went through to do it. So as we've removed uh, a lot of the stuff on our um, Rover 45 that we're doing this job and I thought I'd just show you our one uh, with it all still in to give you just an idea how it'll look and how much more crammed it in it is and why we've removed the alternator to get to the um, air conditioning compressor as you can see from this shot you really cannot even uh, barely see the compressor so now we're indoors and we've of course got the old compressor which is being replaced and um, what we had to do is remove it with the bracket as um, one of the bolts was seized in it had to be removed with heat. It was this um, bolt that goes right through here and into the uh, bracket which is part of the engine mounting and also has the um, belt tensioning wheel on. What we're going to do is um, paint that um, before we put it back in and um, hopefully move on to the uh, next stage. So we've currently got the um, air conditioning pump out and also the alternator out so you can now see the uh, bracket handle the bracket that's mounted onto we've painted red uh, we took that out because we normally like to paint things but also because uh, one the bolts were seized in so it was easier for us to remove the um, air conditioning pump compressor with the um, with the bracket um, down here are the two pipes in and out to the compressor and uh, also you've got the um, wire which is for switching the uh, magnetic clutch in. Um, part of this job we're also going to um, change the dryer which hopefully you can um, see there. Now, as I said, we removed this bracket so we could um, get the air compressor out a lot easier as that bolt was seized. One thing you do need to be aware of if you are removing it, basically just to paint it or because it's easier to get out, um, the mounting that holds the compressor is part of the engine mount. And as you can see, there's that black bar just going across and it goes into a, a rubber mounting as you will be aware that you have to... Um, remove it from that it's fairly straightforward but it's one thing to be aware of and also underneath this is the oil filter and we actually removed the um, oil filter and its bracket that goes onto the engine to allow us to drop it down below of course the air conditioning gas had already gone because it had leaked out but obviously if the gas is still in the system when you want to remove the pump that does have to be removed out which I think has to be done by somebody but we find in most cases the only reason you'd be working on it is because the gas has leaked out so normally it's something you would never normally have to worry about but do check that there is no gas in before you disconnect any of the pipes. 
So to remove the dryer, one of the things you need to do to get access to it, or easy access, is to remove the battery. Um, removing the battery actually is quite easy on um, this Rover 45, as all you need to do is undo this bolt here and remove that clip and slide the battery out and that's it away. Uh, and then it's four bolts holding that tray down to the bracket that holds the air filter next door. Although what we found is that one of the bolts were seized and rusted in and uh, that's the bit you're going to see next is how we got round that. We've also found to get easy access to the dryer you need to remove the headlight as well which is a little bit of a complicated job but well worth doing. So once we'd removed three of the bolts from the battery carrier, you can see this one here is really seized. But what we found is that we're able to bend it up and underneath you've got um, the bracket that actually holds on the air filter, which we've already removed as well. And that is fixed onto this chassis beam which looks like it needs repainting as well so it's something we'd have had to have done anyway and it's also fixed underneath the wing and once we've got that out the way that's actually left us with a much bigger void to get to what we need to which is the um, dryer and we're just removing the two pipes from that nail uh, and it also reveals you access to the hydraulic clutch um, which could be useful if you're ever involved in um, needing to work on that. Right, so we're now moving the um, dryer and as you can see we've moved the um, plug to the sensor and the bolts, you've got one on the top and also you've got one just down there so it's two and that's allowed us to remove the whole bracket with the dryer in um, intact. Right so we're just now painting over the main beam which had a little bit of rust on it, it's the beam that the battery tray and the bracket that held the um, air filter on um, was uh, covering so we put rust killer on it and then just painted it with um, a black sealant paint just to stop it getting any worse um, before we put all the tray back. So that is all the surface rust removed and the black paint added to that beam and something we probably um, should have been aware of as the um, beam the other side by the screen washer bottle we did um, probably um, around about a year ago or so perhaps uh, even less and you may have noticed that the um, heat shield on the exhaust is removed well we removed that again for easier access for getting to the compressor but um, it was also uh, slightly damaged so you'll probably find um, on most of these um, exhaust guards the bottom here was slightly damaged and there was some damage on this uh, corner uh, lucky enough we had a spare one that we'd removed um, from the scrapyard when we were getting some other bits knowing we probably would want one later um, and that we've used to make a good one out of the two as the chances are even when you go to the scrapyard you're going to find that um, the one you get's probably got some damage areas on it so we've um, riveted on the um, bottom piece and uh, this corner piece so this is now complete and uh, working at Zulskard. Um if we could have found a new one we probably would have done but there doesn't seem to be much online and uh, new ones appear to be um, pretty dear so we've got all the uh, brackets and the battery tray and of course the bracket for holding the uh, air filter that the, bra the battery tray fits to uh, all rust protected and uh, ready to paint back in black. We're going to be doing that um, while we check the oil for the compressor and uh, get it fitted. So we've now got the new compressor out of its uh, box and we're just comparing it against the old one although it's come from um, a proper Rover parts dealer Rimmer Brothers it's still best to check before we end up getting it all in and uh, fitted and as we can see they're um, 
as far as we can see, more or less uh, identical. Uh, of course, you've got your um, feed that switches the clutch in the compressor in the magnetic clutch, and uh, also you've got your um, gas feeds in and out of the compressor there, capped off on this. Uh, new one and of course you can see on the uh, old one though we've removed all the clutch uh, you've got your in and outs and the uh, right bolt fittings there uh, of course we are changing the dryer this is the uh, old dryer uh, here and um, again we'll compare it against the new one and uh, show you uh, us fitting that as uh, as well uh, also one of the things to check with the new compressor is of course the oil. Now this has come with uh, some oil in it. We've removed that um, to check just how much is in there and uh, make sure the right amount of oil is in the compressor before we fit it. So we've now got the air conditioning compressor in and uh, mounted on its three mounting points. The only thing we found was the bottom one is slightly shorter so we've um, used a spacer and um, it's probably really we found a two person job, one underneath one on top and hopefully we'll be able to um, show you next the oil going in to the um, things and connecting up the two air conditioning pipes. So as you've just seen, we've put the um, right amount of oil in, we've connected up the plug to supply the power to the clutch when you engage the air conditioning, and we've connected up the um, in and uh, out feed on the compressor pump. So as you see, we were just filling up the oil into the compressor. What we did was got a big um, syringe and taped on a piece of tube. Uh, we use this measuring beaker with the measurements so we could get the right amount of oil. And then um, basically syringed it up out of the container, then syringed it into the compressor. That seems to be the sort of easiest and um, almost sort of neatest way of doing it. Uh, this was the oil that we um, used. We did find quite some really expensive oils but this appears to fit the um, grades we need and hopefully uh, it'll be okay. So we've got the pipes now connected to the compressor and the uh, alternator uh, is back and the exhaust guard is back and that is quite tight getting down there. One of those things do you put that on before the pipes or um, after? It's a, a job to tell, but either way, we'll make it quite tight. And uh, the next stage is to put back the uh, dryer, as you can see in this void, and then get back all the um, air filter brackets and uh, battery bracket. So the dryer we got actually we think was slightly the wrong one, so that's had to be sent back. And while we wait for that, one of the other things we wanted to check was the um, valves that you put the gas in, that's the low and high pressure side, um, were okay because we did have our suspicions they were leaking. Uh, they're quite different to um, the valves on the 75 and other valves, as um, if I show you on the high pressure side, um, you can't actually unscrew the valve, you actually have to take it off by putting a, a spanner here and then turning this and as you can see here um, we've removed the um, top part of the valve we've just got a little bit of tissue paper to uh, to plug it and we took that out and found that the um, seal does appear to be damaged and uh, hopefully I can show you that in just a minute. So as I said this is quite an interesting valve because um, a lot of the valves, and this is what come in our kit, is um, a valve that you put a special little tool on, unwind it out, um, normally coming out of the top bit of the valve here, and then you just replace it. But this valve, you can't do that. You have to um, take it off, we found, um, and then you can take it all to bits, this piece, the spring, 
and then you've got the um, seal and as we did suspect that this could be leaking um, you can see the little rubber o-ring is damaged so we're uh, hoping to uh, either replace it or find uh, an o-ring from our kit that will fit this so we can um, put it back because as I say in our kit of valve replacements they're all this type that screw in from the top rather than it coming to bits and uh, almost it seems you service it. So as you saw from that last clip that we found that the high and low pressure ports on our 45 used what we think isn't the sort of normal conventional type of valve although the body um, does appear to be similar to a lot of air conditioning systems on cars and that is where you use this tool to um, literally remove the valve out of the um, middle um, and then you can replace it basically with um, the centre valve and what we were going to do because we couldn't put one of these centre valves in the um, valve body we were going to try and get the rubbers and um, what we've since done all the rubber seals what we've since done is gone to the um, scrap yard and what we found is that actually the um, valve ports on the Rover 25 do use the standard type of um, inner valve that you can remove with this tool literally by putting it in unscrewing it and out you'll get is this valve so what we've done we've got them and we've removed the old core of the valve port and the kit that we've got and we bought from uh, from ebay which is um, basically uh, a kit like this with all different inner cores we found that um, this inner core will fit those so what we've been able to do is technically refurbish the high and low pressure pole um, with new inner um, valves with all the new seals and hopefully the advantage of this will be that in the future when we do have to regas the system it will then be easier um, to replace the inner valve cores, easier to get hold of and uh, should work better for us and actually it's been quite interesting and uh, a good little learning experience and we'll show them back on the um, pipes when we come to fit the um, high and um, low pressure um, and basically uh, just to show you we've got an empty one there so there you can see that the valve inner valve is out of that one and in this one you can see that the valve is in there and basically they um, go into these um, through the top uh, and screw in uh, this way if you look there so as I say hope that gives you a bit of an idea just how we've um, done it and got round it and might be useful for you. So we're now after refurbishing the valve holders, we're now at the stage of putting them uh, on. Uh, at the moment there's the um, old one with its original insert and just to recall I think we have shown it um, if you look into the um, top of the valve holder you can just see there's no way you can put one of those valve tools into it it's completely sealed um, once we've put on those refurbished ones that I've shown you we will be able to change the um, valve insert and of course we're also going to put on the um, new dryer into that position there as you can see the two pipes are just sitting there waiting to be reconnected to the new dryer uh, in the bracket
so the new dryer has now arrived and um, it does look like this should be the right dryer uh, as you can see there you've got the um, sensor in the side and the two pipes going through the top which is slightly different to the original dryer um, which was shown you before where the sensor and the pipes all go in through the top um, but as you can see the um, holes are inset and the bolts are outset and that's the same um, here the holes that the pipes go into are inset with the bolt holes um, aiming um, to the outset and actually this is how the parts shown um, on some of the parts listings as well although originally all of our 45s have dryers that um, look like the one you can see there. So the um, valves are um, both replaced and their housings and we've now got the dryer back fitted in and uh, it all fits very very well. A little bit of a um, fiddly job getting it in and the pipes lined up and um, in place but now that is uh, all done. So we have tightened up all of the other joins just to make sure there's no leaks and of course when we've changed the green seals we've added um, compressor oil to that. It has been slightly difficult to get the right dryer at the time of making this video um, so it could be difficult to get. As for the future we don't really know but we did find it initially difficult to find the right one. Right, so we've now got the compressor all fully fitted and we've also got the um, dryer fitted. So now really is time to put the gas in and of course we'll see if there are any um, leaks and problems when we do the vacuums and uh, start putting the gas in. But that's it for this part and um, part two we'll be covering everything about us doing the um, vacuum in the system and the um, gassing.